What's up YouTube? Welcome back for part 4 of the Subaru timing belt snapping cylinder head replacement job. Um, I've gotten to the point where I'm ready to reassemble and I'm actually remaking the intro because I lost the last one somehow or something happened. I, I don't know. It's in another folder I can't find. <laughs> so uh, just gonna pick up where we left off from the last part and start putting it reassembling the engine and um, clean start cleaning up the the actual block and remount the heads get the intake back on and pretty much prepped so th that it can go back into the car so when you're doing this kind of thing you'd like to have the cleanest work area that you can and I really don't so the best thing you can do is just lay down fresh cardboard and and use it to soak up any of the oil or coolant that might be coming out uh, any of the dirt and dust that might be falling off it'll just give you a cleaner work area it's nice and soft and impressionable so the the head's not going to get scratched or or you know dinged from hitting concrete because uh, i mean you could literally lay down cardboard on the floor and do these do the same thing on the floor if you really wanted to um, so yeah, try and have as clean of a work area as possible. So I'll dig out the first head and lay it out to see exactly what it is I have to swap over from one to the other because I really don't know, I haven't unboxed it yet. So I'll uh, basically bring over the box and cut it open and we'll see what we have. Okay, so I got one fairly large box. Uh, let's see what's inside here. Two large items. This should be the one that we're looking for. It looks fully loaded and ready to go, which is kind of nice. They were packaged really well. Lots of uh, bubble wrap around them. See a lot of some old hardware. Which I don't care for when you spend that kind of money. The uh, cam cap bridge doesn't look as clean as what the head does. The head looks like absolutely brand new. And I'm kind of wondering if it is. because it looks gorgeous. Turn it this way. It's a really nice cut. So it looks like all brand new valves. Really nice clean cut. Uh, the casting looks, I mean, it looks brand new. Uh, I'm gonna assume it probably is. Uh, the bridge is definitely a used, used one. I mean, you can see some of the corrosion that uh, got cleaned off. Uh, but I'm gonna presume everything is set and ready to go. Although, what I like to do is uh, just qu quickly check some valve clearance and uh, make sure it's really close, if not bang on, because now's the, now's the actual time to do it. So we'll go about checking the exhaust far side first. I got a 10 thou feeler. And 
And actually, it feels pretty good. That one could be perfect. We're doing the exhaust here. Actually, they feel really good. So I've got an. I always try the next step up to see, see if I can get it in or not. And that's an 11 I'm about to try in there. Now the 11 actually goes in. But it really doesn't want to go in on that one. And it doesn't want to go in on those two. So, so the spec is like pretty much 10 thousandths and it almost gives you one and a half either, either way of clearance. So even though the 11 will go into this one, and I mean, I gotta, I gotta line it up absolutely perfect to get it in there. I'm gonna s say that that one's still probably okay. Let's try a 12. Okay, well, the 12 definitely isn't gonna go in. So just for the sake of it, I'm going to try and snug this one just so slightly. So I'm going to actually hold the adjusting pin with this screwdriver and, and just try and loosen the nut, the nut. Just enough that I can just get a little turn on that stud. Go ahead, retighten this nut while holding the adjusting pin as tight as I can. And once you get it pretty much tight by hand, you can come along and tighten that. They wanted it at 7.2 foot pounds. So I, I generally get into my inch pound wrench for this kind of stuff. Um, 7.2 foot pounds into inches is 86.4 inch pounds. And you can see I'm already tight enough, just tightening it by hand. And we'll go ahead and double check clearance. That 10 feels nice going through there. We'll go to our 11 again. And the 11 does not want to pass in there. So we've got this, this side done. We'll move on to the intake side. So there's a few things I need to cross over from one to the other. And fortunately it's not the whole entire rocker set and camshaft and everything. Um, but I've got to change over this timing solenoid and all the everything going to it. Um, there's a little bracket over here to hold some of the wiring and another one on the front there and another uh, bracket along the bottom along the exhaust side uh, that holds a heat shield or the ground strap the ground strap and maybe some other wiring over here and I also have to change these studs over which kind of sucks but um, I do have a stud puller it should be able to get them out and if it won't get them then I can just probably double nut them and crank them out that way so all that stuff needs to go onto this head, and we'll do the other one. Uh, I'll probably do it off cam. Both heads are prepared to install. Uh, I've checked valve clearance on everything. I've swapped off all the parts from the other heads and installed them on these ones. Um, so really, all I got to do now is uh, gonna. Take some brake clean, spray it onto a clean rag, and then just wipe the surface, the deck of the head, make sure all the oil and everything's off of it.
And now that I have those like that, uh, it's time to prep the block and get ready to install these. Couple things before we start. You, you want to make sure you haven't lost these uh, dowels. I don't think I've ever seen a pair of them come out, but it's something you definitely don't want to send back with your core returns and end up losing them. You need these to be in there, and uh, so definitely don't lose them. Next thing is, this is what I use to clean up stuff like this. This is a yellow Rolock uh, bristle disc. Um, white is the the softest, yellow is the medium coarseness, and then green gets to the most coarseness. Uh, I like to use yellow, it's safe for aluminum, but you, you can't really, you can't work it too hard on aluminum. It will start to meld it. Um, and give you uneven spots if you if you start to build a little temperature with it. Uh, white is the safest to use for aluminum, but um, you go through the discs like in no time at all if you're using white. And generally, green is for is for steel or cast. So everything, everything cleans up really nice. Just turn this piston up. I'm going to turn the other one up, uh, just to have a better look to see how these exhaust valves hit. And and like I don't know what kind of recession was here for the valve. I'm, I'm sure there was some type of relief, but uh, everything looks good. Dude, I mean, you'd like to see if that compression ring will spin because if anything. The, the top of the piston has been pinched down on the ring land but I mean I highly doubt it and for subi heads these are generally the same side for side so you just kind of want to line them up on the dowel pins and lay it into place it may not want to lay even but just make sure it's in there these multi-layered steel gaskets have a little bit of flex to them you always want to make sure you have a good inspection of the gasket before installing it as well, both sides. Um, any bends or uh, you know uh, gouges of any kind in in the surface. Uh, that's something you probably don't want to use. So head bolts. Uh, reusing head bolts is kind of one of those things where you just you just want to look for certain things and uh, and then of course application because some some bolts you just wouldn't want to reuse we're looking for thread stretch of any kind we want to make sure the the threads are really clean so first thing is we'll we'll break clean them and get any of that oil residue or anything that might be on there from the last time off so they look really nice. And then these washers on the on the heads of the bolts, you want to drop of oil on those. Work it right into the head. This prevents any kind of binding when trying to torque the head down. And then depending on application, you might put oil on the threads, you might not. But I generally put at least a drop of oil on threads. So when installing the head, you just want to make sure you get a good hold of it and guide it around what you need. You don't want to be crashing into the gasket and get the top of it to generally go onto the dowels. 
and it'll just kind of cradle in place and sit there. And allow you to start some bolts in it. Once you have the bolts in a few threads, you should uh, should just be able to let it kind of hang there, and then just slowly wind these bolts in by hand. So you just feel a touch, and then go with this one in the same. So our first. First two passes, I guess, are you know pretty much seat the gasket. Um, then once the gasket's been seated, we'll back it off and go about the final torque sequence. So for first, they they want 21.4 foot pounds, which my half inch doesn't go down that far, so I go to convert it to inch pounds, which would be about 256 inch pounds. So we'll start the sequence. And this is A. And we'll go down to B. Up to C. Down over to D. Cross over to E. And up and over to F. So the next pass, all bolts, is 50.9 foot pounds. We'll start with A. Down to B. Up and over to C. Down and over to D. Over to E. And up and across over to F. So the next step is actually to loosen everything. So you want to back off all bolts 180 degrees in reverse of the installation sequence. So starting with F and ending with A. I don't have a degree wheel on now because we're not too too concerned if it's 180. It would be nice if it's bang on but doing it by eye. If we start out here then we're just going to end up over here as best we can. Something like that. Down over to E. Crossed to D. C down to B and 
connection up to A. So within step four, we need to loosen them another 180 degrees each. And you can actually see the heads drop down just a, just a tiny bit. Pass number five is retorque in sequence to 31 foot-pounds all bolts, starting with A. Down to B. Up to C. Across to D. Over to E. Up to F. Don't mistake in the squeaking, tightening noise for the click of the ratchet. So to proceed with pass number six, you're going to need one of these. Um, you can try and turn something 90 degrees or 45 degrees, but I highly don't recommend it. Uh, unless you're in a jam, or you're, you, you, can, you can ensure that you're eyeballing a, a 90 degree turn, um, you, can, you can get away with it, but these have dropped so much in price. When I first got into the trade I, I remember seeing them on the snap-on truck for asking them and they'd be like 89.95 or something like that and uh, so I just held off and waited and waited and then finally got this one online because I figured China was producing them and uh, it's I mean other than saying not saying snap-on on it it seems to be the exact same tool and this is like $20 to my door so uh, it's a it's a tool that you can certainly have if you're doing a lot of engine repair you uh, most of them require tightening by degree now so uh, a lot of older engines only required having a torque wrench but all this newer stuff So I'll get that set on there. You see that stopping pin? You just rest that against somewhere where it can't can't turn. It, it'll hold the the gauge, and then the wheel turns around with the tightener, and eventually it'll show you where to stop. So I like to set it at zero. You like to try and do this in one pass as well. You don't want to have to take this out and then reset it because you, you could lose your where, where you're set and if you're halfway down through your s s passes and you do something that you're unsure of or you're like oh no what happened there it, I mean you can you can get to the point where you're a little bit alarmed do you loosen everything off and start over is the, is the gasket gonna be okay and so just uh, try and set yourself up that you can swing this the entire range that you need to so we'll start with A. I'm just using a power bar. No need for a torque wrench here. And then we'll just crank this to 90. We'll set up for B.
maybe I screwed up the past numbers, but we're at number seven, so uh, number past number six is 90 degree, 80 to 90 degrees, all bolts within sequence. Pass number seven will be 40 to 45 degrees, all bolts in sequence. And final pass number eight is A and B bolts, another 40 to 45 degrees. And here's where things start to get real tight. And now we have completely torqued this left hand side. Uh, from here, I like to close things up, at least on the side. I'll stick some rags down the intake ports and I'll install the spark plugs. Then with new grommets in place and a new gasket, we'll put this valve cover on. So we'll get this covered, torqued down. Uh, it's 4.7 foot pounds. You do it in order: A, B, C, D, E, F, and then you do A and B once more at the same torque. None of the others. That should be it. So we get some uh, NGK iridiums to put it back in. BKR5s. The gap out the box seems to be about 42. They last a long, long time, so. And then I'll take a clean rag and just kinda stuff it down in those holes just for now. Not to the point it's touching the valves, just resting there. Okay, so I've gone ahead and got the whole timing all back together with all the new components. I've installed the new water pump and everything's pretty much ready to turn over. So on a single over cam engine, you're looking at that same timing mark in the, right in the center there. You want to make sure that guy's lined right up and you can see it is off center. The, the center of the block is right up here and if you follow it straight down it's just off to the right just a tiny bit. Um, this mark is obviously lined up as best you can there and the same on this side unfortunately I don't know why they don't mark these belts sometimes correctly but that line doesn't line up with anything so uh, you kinda have to use your judgment and go by the actual time marks and you always should sometimes be you reusing a time belt and it won't have marks on it anymore it's just good practice to identify timing marks 
and I mean just having one tooth off can cause you grief you're gonna have to take the whole thing back apart just to reset it one cog and I mean that's that's just a waste of your time so now I'm gonna I'm gonna roll this thing over a few times confirm timing and I'll just go ahead and pull the pin and uh, start putting the rest of the front back on and get to the intake manifold next now with the front all together I can go ahead and put on the intake manifold so you want to make sure you get all the gasket surfaces cleaned up and your gas new gaskets are in place and just uh, slowly kind of just rest it down into place let it sit there for a second make sure you got everything go getting out of the way See, it just needs a little push over that way a little bit. Just lightly lift it, reposition, grab a good light and look down the holes, see how close you are. And then once the intake's in place, just go ahead and drop in all the bolts. Intake manifold torque is 18.4 foot pounds or 220 inch pounds. Now they can go from inside to out, crossing back over one side to the other. At this point, I'm pretty sure it's ready to drop in. The intake's fully on, everything's plugged in, and I even had the throttle body off to just clean it right out. As you can see, I got the engine all slung up, and it's ready to go over into the engine bay and fall down into place. But I kind of run out of time, and, and I'm going to stop this video here. This will be the end of part four. Uh, just some things to note when I was turning over the engine while doing the time belt. Um, it uh, felt like good compression because the spark plugs are in it and I could hear really good compression coming out of the exhaust so um, I'm going to assume it's going to be a really good running engine and uh, you'll have to come back for part 5 and check out uh, the finalization getting it all ins finalized installed into the car and turn the key and see what this thing runs like so yeah, if you uh, like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for me. And leave your questions and comments further down below. I'll see you in the next one.